Not bad. What's happening my fellow ghouls and ghoulettes? Welcome to a brand new episode of Cosplay Chris and today we're going to be building a replica of the popsicle stick house from a Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors. So we're going to be doing a replica of the work in progress version of the house. We see Kristen building at the beginning of the film. We then see Nancy take the house because she realizes that's her fucking house. This is a really fun build ghouls and ghoulettes. I've been looking forward to this for the longest time. Now the cool thing is if you guys want to do a build along I have the templates readily available. If you want to drop me an email at cosplaychris at gmail.com, I have two files that are of the templates all drawn out. It obviously just means that you have to go buy some foam board, draw them all out, but all the measurements are there. Now it is a mixture of centimeters and inches because I have a lizard brain. So this is a board of one of the measurements here. So this is the main body of the house. Yeah, main body of the house. So we've got the front, we've got the top roof, the angled roof and stuff like that. So they're just two high res JPEG files. I know it's pretty archaic the way to do it. But again, if you just want to drop me an email, cosplaychris at gmail.com, you can do a build along with this video. So first things first, I'm going to show you guys all the templates drawn out. So with that being said, let's get to it. All right, ghouls and ghoulettes, here are all of the templates of the main section of the house. So the overall body of the house. Now, we're gonna be using foam board for this. Now for the actual build master, this is what I'm gonna be using as reference for dimensions and stuff like that, it was actually built using core flutes. So there's a big difference between core flute that I use for this and foam board that I'm gonna be using for the final build. I just feel this is more paper-esque or this is more plasticky and when it comes to gluing down the newspaper pieces, we need something that's going to absorb into something that has a bit of paper mixed into it. The main width is 12 inches across for the house and the good thing about popsicle sticks, they never change their shape. Like typical, standard, normal size popsicle sticks never change their shape, size, etc. So you can always gauge how big certain portions and certain pieces are of the actual house which is great. So as you can see here we've got the front of the house, we've got the front roof, the top two roofs, the back roof and obviously the back. Now the overall base that the house sits on is 43 centimeters by 46. Again most of this is me eyeballing at ghouls and ghoulettes but if it helps just by having these basic measurements here it can just make life a lot easier. Now we've also got the two sides of the house here so these are actually going to be covered in newspaper first before these pieces are assembled. Now when everything's assembled I'm going to be doing a mass weathering session with some watered down brown and black shoe polish and probably some artist oils just to really rough up and dirty up the newspaper. But before we get to any of that we're going to cut all of these sections out with a Stanley knife and a ruler. So that being said let's get to it. Okay, so we have the base all cut out. We have one side, another side. Now these two pieces here are the front steps that the pillars are gonna be resting on. We've got the back of the house, we've got the back angled roof, top angled roof, the front of the top angled roof, the front portion of the roof that sits above the actual front of the house. And this is where the door is gonna go. Honestly, that was very satisfying to cut out. This stuff cuts so easily, providing you've got a nice, sharp, fresh blade. Alrighty, it's now time to do some some basic assembly. So we're going to be assembling the main front and back body of the house. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and marked in on the underside of the front portion of the roof half an inch in. And what we're going to be doing is actually taping it together. So the tape is going to act as a temporary hold until we glue this piece to the two sides of the house, if that makes sense. So if we line it up like so, I'm just going to grab some duct tape 
I know, very crude, but trust me on this. Tape it down like so on that side and like so on this side, making sure they're still lining up. And so that way we're still able to play with the angling, if you know what I mean. And this is also gonna help when we drape this piece over the two sides of the house. Now, when it comes to these two sections of the roof, we just have to line them together like so. We don't have to have any overlapping. The middle one. So we've got the back portion of the roof here. Now, I've also got another overlapping lip here for the back section. So this is the back of the house with the windows all cut out. And we're gonna have this overlapping too. So, because it just gives the illusion that it's like an overhanging gutter, if that makes sense. Alrighty, and that way, even though it looks a bit flat, there you go. We've got the basic shape of the house all ready to go. And like I said, just when it comes to draping this over the two ends of the house, it's just gonna make life a lot more easier. But obviously for the front and the back, we need it overhanging like so. So we've got the illusion of like a gutter. So I've got one side of the house here. We'll just do a test just to make sure it all kind of marries up and lines up. And that all looks pretty good to me. Okay, it's now time to start laying down some newspaper. So we're gonna be starting on the sides of the house and the base of the house. So I have not bought a newspaper in God knows how long, like 10 years. So I went and bought the Sydney Morning Herald. I had it in my head. It would be so cool to track down some newspapers uh, from 1987 when the third Elm Street came out, but it just gets too costly and I don't want to tear apart an old vintage newspaper. So I'm not going to be using articles like this. I want like dialogue heavy pieces of newspaper just like this and just tearing them up sporadically. Now, I'm not gonna be using paper mache. It gets too messy, it gets too clunky. I'm just gonna be using PVA craft glue. So I will be laying down a layer of PVA glue on the actual piece and then backing up each piece of newspaper with PVA glue and laying it down. Now, I'm gonna have some pieces overlapping and overhanging around the windows, but when it comes to around here, when everything's dry, I'm just gonna grab my Stanley knife and blade off all the excess here. It's seriously like kindergarten stuff. Alrighty, it's now time to glue each end of the house onto the actual main body. Now, you'll probably see under the windows here, I've got some pieces of balsa wood dowel. So, they're two pieces that have been glued together. So, I've got one, one under there, uh, two, three, four. So, four slats here. And the reason being is I need the end elevated because there is a lip of, uh, of the front, the back, and the roof section all the way around. So I'm gonna grab some cheap and nasty super glue and secure the base pieces in and then go in with a hot glue gun and do the entire area. Now, if you do notice this isn't flush here, that's totally fine because we're gonna get some more paper and glue down the sides to the actual base and you see it kind of tapering down so it will cover all of this up if that is exposed. Couple of dabs there and a couple of dabs there. Here, glue there. Dab of glue there and a dab of glue there at the front. Alrighty, so here's where we're at. I'm very happy with how it's looking so far. The proportions look good. I'm loving how the newspaper looks on this side. So before I permanently fix this down to the base, I'm gonna go ahead and start to apply newspaper at the back here. But I'm just gonna have it up like so and just have a bit of a weight there just so it just makes it easier instead of having it up like this and then trying to stifle the newspaper on. So once that's done, I'm then gonna fix this to the actual base. 
I'm not gonna be adding any newspaper on the front here. From what I can see, there's no newspaper. It's just all white base with the white popsicle sticks and white pieces of balsa wood and obviously the red door. But then once this is fixed down to the base, I'm then gonna cover the entire roof with newspaper and blend in all these edges here. Now, from what I've seen on the prop, there are pieces of like stray bits of newspaper hanging over and kind of crumbling under the uh, the trim here, which is kind of cool. So I'm not gonna be exactly blading off everything. I'm just gonna sporadically leave pieces kind of hanging over. Okay, now that the back's been covered in newspaper, I'm just gonna line everything up for the base and then permanently glue the house body down to the base itself, just using some cheap and nasty super glue just on certain edges. Cool. And now we're just gonna continue on papering up the rest of the roof. So this panel, this panel third one, and the one at the back. Again, leaving the front actually bare. It's just from what I can see, white base, and then the white popsicle sticks and trimmings followed by the red door. Helpful hint, if you find the PVA glue is getting too gluggy, you can water it down. Um, it, it won't affect how it dries, whatnot. I just find it brushes on a lot easier if you add just a little bit of water to your mixture. Alrighty, it's now time to start doing all of the detail work and that is gonna be utilizing a shitload of popsicle sticks. Now, I stupidly forgot to do the door, paint the door and install the door. And I've gone ahead and glued the body of the house down, but it's fine, we can work around it. I can pop the door in lengthways and then secure it in from the back here. So that's totally fine. So I've got some pieces of balsa wood dowling here. They're gonna be our pylons right here. Now the two colors I'm gonna be using to spray the popsicle sticks and some balsa wood pieces is a Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte White and a Rust-Oleum Gloss Hunter Green. To be honest, it was actually hard to find a good green that matches on popsicle sticks. Popsicle sticks can be sometimes very hard to paint. Now they did use permanent markers for the original prop and they still make them to this day, but if you just wanna quickly smash out a bulk load of popsicle sticks, spray paint is definitely the way to go. So what I'm gonna be doing is spraying batches of white popsicle sticks and then green popsicle sticks, as well as some trimmings with the balsa wood pieces. So they're gonna be white. I also have this frame here that I've gone ahead and glued together with some of the balsa wood pieces and two popsicle sticks. And that is gonna be mounted on the front facade of the roof here and then covered with other little split up pieces of balsa wood to, to emulate kind of a boarded up kind of facade. And then we're gonna start gluing everything down down. So we've got the half green roof here. So we're gonna be emulating the prop from the beginning of the film and halfway through the film when Kristen is basically working on this. It's still a work in progress. And obviously at the end of the film, uh, Dr. Gordon has gone ahead and completed the whole house, but I love the rustic half completed look of the prop. Alrighty, we're gonna start gluing things down in place. So I've just got the steps resting here, but I'm gonna just start to add these little beams on the sides where the door is gonna be. Again, with some cheap and nasty super glue, just run it down along the side here. Make sure it's wedged up in there. So that way the steps can still come out before we put the door in. And we're also gonna start to glue down the white popsicle sticks on the front of the house. Okay, one. So there should be five on either side and then a little bit of space here for when we go to put in the, uh, the, the boards, the barricades and stuff like that up. So you'll notice I did glue in some raw balsa wood pieces. I'm just gonna go in with a white acrylic paint and touch them up. I just, Figured, you know, instead of spraying them all, and you can do touch-ups here if we want to get rid of some um, lead pencil markings and stuff like that, we can just go over it with some white acrylic paint. But for the time being, here's the door, all cut, ready to go. Now keep in mind, uh, this section here is going to be boarded up, so I'm just leaving it bare for now. But the red I'm going to be using is a Rust-Oleum Gloss Colonial Red. 
give it a spray and let it dry. And then I reckon we'll be good to pop it inside the actual doorway itself. Okay, I'm just gonna install the door now. So I've popped it in like so, lined it up, and just a couple of dabs of cheap and nasty super glue. Perfect. So when it comes to the actual overhang that's gonna be resting on the pillars, I just got the cut off pieces of popsicle stick. So we've got 10 glued down just to some cardboard, just some bendy cardboard. So that way, whoop, if I can get it to focus, we get that nice dome shape. It's gonna be resting on top of the two pillars. Alrighty, I think it's time to start gluing down the green popsicle stick. So I'm actually gonna be using hot glue this time around. So I'm gonna be starting with this panel here. Now from what I've seen on the screen use prop, we've got 10 popsicle sticks along this section here. And then there's kind of like a doubling up and some layering going on here. Cause we have a couple of popsicle sticks that kind of hyper extend over this angled part here of the roof. But before we get carried away, I'm gonna do the first 10 here again, just using the hot, whoop, that turned out wrong. Get back in there, get in there, you bastard. So pretty straightforward. And from what I saw in the film, Kristen uses PVA glue, I think. Some sort of PVA glue. And that would just take fucking forever to dry. I think, I think they've just done it for like effect on screen. Surely the prop guys wouldn't have actually used PVA glue. That just would have taken way too long to do. Okay, number nine and number 10, line that up. Yep, that looks good to me. All right, cool. So for this row here, we've got four popsicle sticks that are gonna meet up here. And then we've got 16 that hyper extend over this angled portion of the roof. Now in terms of placement for how far these are gonna hyper extend, it's, it's pretty much just eyeballing it. So keep in mind, we're gonna be placing this frame over here too now. So I'm just looking back at a screenshot on my laptop. I reckon, yeah, I reckon that's pretty good there. Okay, cool. Okay, let's move on to the next row. So the final row runs flush with this angled part of the roof. Now we've got 18 remaining and there are 18 on the top row of the actual prop. Alrighty. Done. Hokey dokey, Smokey. Now we're gonna attach this frame to the front facade. So the measurements for this one are seven centimeters by 22 centimeters. So I've lined up as best as I can to center this piece. And that looks pretty good to me. So what we're gonna do is lay this piece down. I then have five paddle pop sticks that have been cut in sections to fit inside this frame here. So they're gonna go opposite ends, opposite ends, opposite ends. And they're gonna give them a nice little touch up with some white acrylic. And then after that, we can go in and start using some cut up pieces of balsa wood for the boarded up portions of the house. So all along here, we've got the windows down here too. And then we can start weathering this entire piece. That's the part I'm most excited about. So as always, we're just gonna grab some good old fashioned cheap and nasty super glue. Okay, line her up. Just slightly press it against there. Now, if you notice some lighter shades of green on the popsicle sticks, well, I got myself a gloss meadow green, sprayed it in a cup and dry brushed it onto some of the popsicle sticks. I just felt the original green that I was using was just a little too dark. And by dry brushing on a lighter green, it just gives the popsicle sticks a bit more depth. And again, I just felt the original green was just way too dark. Whereas here, we've got a bit of a difference. We've got a lighter green, we've got a darker green. It kind of just shades it like you've colored these with a permanent marker like Kristen did in the film. And you know, some pieces are gonna be darker than other pieces. So I think also this just adds a bit more depth. So I'm very happy with how this has turned out. So again, just sprayed in a cup with my brush and just dry brushing it on sporadically 
all over the placement of the popsicle sticks. Also picking up that lovely wood grain too. Now the last step before we start weathering the entire piece is we've got to cut out our slats slash boarded up pieces. So I've just got a thin piece of balsa wood. So balsa wood that has a bit of flex to it because there are gonna be certain pieces that are crisscrossing and you kind of want them to have that little bit of flex to have glue on each ends and make contact with the actual house. So I'm just gonna grab my ruler and my blade and just cut pieces away like so. Nice and easy. Now when it comes to the ends of them, split them off. That way they've kind of got that jagged, old, decrepit piece of wood look to it. All right, girls and ghoulettes, it's time to start weathering this thing before we can call it a day. So first up, I'm gonna be using a mixture of oil colors. I've got a burnt sienna, a burnt umber, and an ivory black. So the browns are essentially to stain the newspaper, make the newspaper look a lot more old, weathered, and haggard. And then we're gonna go in with the black on certain parts of, uh, of the white portions of the house and, and utilizing the browns in certain areas for soiling, staining, and whatnot. Now, once this is done, I'm then gonna grab some watered down black and brown shoe polish and start to stain all of the board slats here. Now, I did take this back off because it just is gonna make weathering of the pillars a lot more easier, but I will be gluing it back on once we've finished with the weathering. And the piece de resistance is adding a little bit of cheeky hobby grass just around this pillar here. From what I can see, it's like as if Kristen has tried to emulate a vine growing around this pillar. And then we can call it a day. So I'm gonna start with the browns. Now with oil color, a little goes an extremely long way. So you wanna get good coverage on your brush and kind of wipe away the excess just so it's a nice even kind of stain that you're going for. Okay, let's try it here. Perfect. Yeah, that is looking good to me. And like do some extra staining around this facade as well. Yeah, really loving how that's turning out. Just that slight change just ages and weathers the newspaper like it's an old vintage newspaper. Do little stains here as well. And last but not least, we've got our black shoe polish and our brown shoe polish. So I'm just gonna add a bit of water to each batch. So what I'm gonna be doing is covering all of the slats with a brown wash first. And then there are certain slats and boards that are a lot darker than the actual brown. So they'll be covered with the watered down black shoe polish. And when it comes to like the mix ratio, ghouls and ghoulettes, it's just a matter of eyeballing, just whatever works for you. Like that looks like a pretty good consistency to stain the balsa wood. And then obviously vice versa when we go in and stain some other pieces a lot darker. But after this step, we're all done and dusted.
And there we have it, Ghouls and Ghoulettes, a fun little replica of the Popsicle Steakhouse from A Nightmare on Elm Street 3. This was a lot of fun to do. It's been in the back of my head for the longest time since I was a little kid. The, the prop in the film is so iconic and I just wanted to have a crack at it. So I hope you guys got a Jones in out of this video and I hope you liked that little skit at the beginning. That was a lot of fun to do. Also, I just want to give a massive shout out to Mr. Michael Sands who builds beautiful replicas of these houses and gave some really insightful tips before I started building this thing. Guys, wherever you are in the world, please have yourselves an absolute absolute cracker of a day. I hope you're well. Hope you're happy. Be merry, be silly. And until next time, ghouls and ghoulettes, please always remember, cosplayers do it best.